fish with so many fish in there. So huge. We have over 450,000 visitors a year visit this location. This is uh, unique and unnatural. Since World War II, people have been coming here to feed the carp. My name is Dan Bickle. I'm the park operations manager here at Pima Tuning State Park. So I'm in charge of uh, managing essentially the second largest state park in Pennsylvania. A very large park, very large lake, 17,000 acre reservoir. It is a man-made lake. This reservoir was completed in 1933. Pima Tuning Lake Reservoir is right on the Pennsylvania-Ohio border. And we're just a short drive from Pittsburgh, really. It's only an hour and a half. Ready? This is the spillway. This is actually a secondary dam to flood the upper reservoir, which is 2,200 acres. From day one, it's been a tourist attraction. Boating, fishing, we have some of the best fishing uh, in the eastern United States in this reservoir. Saw a lot of young of the year or one-year-old walleye, so it should be good in a couple of years. I'm Tim Wilson. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. The majority of the muskies, walleyes, and many other the warm water fish that we stock throughout Pennsylvania. So they, they collect them here, they, hat, uh, they collect the eggs, spawn them, hatch out the eggs, raise them to fingerling size, and stock them throughout the state. These are the biggest specimens in the lake, uh, and this is a tiny fraction of the carp population in Pima Tuning Reservoir. They are a introduced species. They were brought over from uh, Europe and Asia in the late 1800s as a, a food fish, so they could be commercially uh, caught and shipped to market. Uh, they have spread through human hands throughout North America and we consider them naturalized. They're part of the ecology just about everywhere you go. They're almost everywhere. Carp, carp, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anything else other than carp, actually. We think about carp as not an edible fish, but people do eat them. And actually, it, on there are some menus in the early part of this, this century where carp was actually featured in some fancy hotels on the menu. You have the biggest ones here and yeah there's several thousand at any one time probably. Unbelievable. So it's wild how many fish there really is here. Millions. Has to be millions. Has to be. And there's two distinct populations because there's the population in the sanctuary above the rim and then the population below the bowl. Uh, occasionally when there's a flood they will exchange but for the most part they're rather distinct populations. If you go to the southern end of the lake, those carp don't even know the spillway exists. They've probably never been up here. This project happened in 2008. It was over a $2 million project to, to renovate this area. Prior to that, we just had a little white wooden shack type building here. But it's beautiful. This area is handicapped accessible, has observation areas, um, uh, modern restrooms here, and uh, gift shops, snack bars. More bread. We sell a lot of bread plus uh, we have a lot of people bring their own bread. So it's, and there's a couple of businesses around that sell bread also. My name's Barb Hogan, and I'm the concessionaire here at Pima Tuning State Park Spillway. We pretty much take care of the concessions here. There you go, sweetheart. Memorial Day weekend, we probably sold over 4,000 loaves. Plus, you figure probably 20% brought their own. So that's a lot of bread. But these fish, you wouldn't believe the amount of bread that they can eat. It's amazing to me that they can eat that much, and we don't have one single overweight goose. <laughs> the ducks walk on the back of the fish. There's so many of them side by side. I can remember coming up, my, mom, my mom's here now. She used to bring us up when we were kids, and uh, it's kind of been a family thing over the years. And now I get a chance to do it with my daughter. It's pretty cool. In state parks in Pennsylvania, we're fortunate that there's still there's no entrance fee. So there's a lot of great areas like this in state parks. To have this many fish and this many ducks and geese in one little area, and they're just sitting here waiting yeah, for, you, for you to feed them. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Anywhere. I've never seen it anywhere. It's amazing. It's just something you have to see. It's a unique experience. You don't get to see or do this anywhere else that I know of. Fantastic place to be. You know? Great people, great scenery, a lot of fun.